Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I live in Baltimore City, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel, I feature content generally focused on knitting and spinning. As you can see, we have Star Baby Moonchild joining us once again. She is your favorite calico kitty from the Baltimore City area. And I have an exciting progress update to share on my striped cardigan design I've been working the last few weeks. If you're not familiar with it yet, I'm using Brooklyn Tweed's Arbor yarn in three colors. I have four 50 gram skeins of the brown, which is called burnished, and then two 50 gram skeins of each of the contrast colors. One is tincture and the darker one is, I think it's climped. Um, something like that. I feel like I'm getting my consonants confused, but anyway. Um, so I've finished working the body up until the bottom band, and I'm currently knitting the first of two sleeves. Of course there's two sleeves, but I'm working the first sleeve and I'm almost done with it. And once I wrap up the sleeve, I think I'm going to switch to the bottom band button band collar combo. This is not a super great visual of it because I'm not standing up for you, but you can see that it is, you know, it's a cardigan. It's not, it's not anything mind blowing, but I think that the stripes make it really fun. I'm a huge fan right now of skinny stripes, um, especially repeated in this manner where you have like this mean color buffering the other two. And I'm not at all surprised that I'm really happy to be knitting with this yarn. It has a lot of air and at the same time a lot of structure where there's just, you know, between the three plies and the twist of them all, there's just a lot, a lot of kind of bounce to it. So anyway, here's a little close up of the fabric as it is. I have some exciting plans for the button band and we'll see how that goes. But I'm, I'm just plugging away on this baby. I haven't really done anything else. I know in last week's episode, I talked about all of the things I'm planning to spin for and the patterns that I purchased and intend to knit. Uh, I haven't swatched yet for any of them, but this is my biggest priority right now. So that is my knitting update. It's really not a lot to share. There is something else though, knitting related that I wanted to talk about briefly. Um, Bella from the 100 Acre Wool podcast has published a sweater pattern. I saw it on her channel the other day, she was wearing it and I just thought this sweater is so gorgeous. I wanted to talk about it briefly here. She's calling it, I think, Fields of Gold. Yes. And it's knit with that unspun yarn, like Plutolope. I know she uses um, a very, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the yarn she uses, but you could use any unspun yarn for this. And I feel like it probably really shines with that particular type of yarn because of the the unique structure of those main stitches there and because i don't have any of that yarn in my stash i didn't purchase the pattern right away because i just purchased so many patterns that i actually have yarn for so i have that i'm going to put it in my queue right now because i don't think i have yet but i i'm definitely keeping her pattern in my queue um, it is in my queue, uh, for future making, because I saw it on her, in her podcast, and I really loved that squarish neckline. I thought that was gorgeous. It's just such a lovely looking sweater, and I thought I would mention it, because I don't know if you've seen it yet, and if you have any of that type of yarn in your stash, it would be a really great project for it. So there's that. Um, and then I have been on the hunt for a new signature scent. Um, it's something that I've spent week after week after week trying to sort out. And I want to tell you a little bit about it because that might be something you're interested in knowing. Maybe you're not. Um, 
I try to please everybody all the time and I know that that's just not ever gonna happen. So if you're only here for the knitting content, hello, goodbye, because <laughs> we're gonna talk a little bit about fragrance. I felt somewhat inspired by Michelle Wong. I really do like her YouTube channel. I'm not able to get through every video of hers because what she purchases is way outside of my price range most of the time. Although one day I might, one day I might find a high-end luxury or boutique fragrance that I must purchase. But in the meantime, I found a few things I'm excited by and I thought I would share them with you because they really do bring me a little bit of joy. Fragrance is something that I feel like is such a luxury. I don't think a lot of people talk about it. Um, but it's something that kind of gets folded into my everyday life. I really love to wear a gorgeous fragrance and I, especially with sweaters because they kind of like stretch the sweater through just a few more wears before it's needed to be washed. So I'm gonna try to be brief. The first designer fragrance I purchased for myself several years ago was Givenchy L'Interdit. This is the Eau de Toilette. Um, but I thought I was purchasing the Eau de Perfume and I wasn't. So I settled for this because I it was what I bought and it was a little more affordable. And it is lovely still. It's not the perfume. And so a couple years later, I did end up buying that as well. So I bought the bigger bottle of it. They're very similar. They're not um, unlike one another. Um, but this one's just a little bit more sweet, a little softer around the edges. This one has a little bit of sharpness to it. Um, and they're both sickeningly sweet. So that's, for context, something that I love. I love sweet. I love florals. I hate powdery fragrances. It's just not for me. I feel like I'm inside of a baby's diaper when I'm wearing a fragrance that has a bit of a powdery smell to it. So... That is some context for my nose and what I like to wear. And then there's two others that I bought prior to the last couple years. And that was Estate Laurent Black Opium, which is, I know I just read about this recently. It's like coffee and vanilla and it's very warm and it's very sweet and it has uh, a, a lot of like power to it. It only takes two sprays to feel like everyone's gonna smell me. I like to wear it before bed and I don't really go out much, but if I were going out, I would wear this one. And then the other that I really like, especially in the fall and the winter, I bought the smaller bottle, but in retrospect, I would have gone with the bigger because the packaging is a bit nicer, um, but it's replica by the fireside. And this one is sweet and smoky. It smells like you were just by a fire, but it has this sweetness to it where I don't feel like it's a masculine fire. I don't know, sexy fire? I'm gonna spray this. Yeah, and I really like to wear this in the fall and winter because it just gives you warm, cozy vibes very smoky. I didn't know until recently that I'm I'm a woody girl. I love woody fragrances and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But first I'm going to share what kind of started this fragrance trend for me right now. Back to Michelle Wong. I remember her talking in many different videos about Jo Malone. I think she was doing one of those uh, Christmas advent calendars from Jo Malone and she got me really interested in wanting to try some of their products. And so when I was in the mall, I stopped at the Jo Malone counter at Nordstrom's and I smelled everything and I really couldn't choose, like nothing, nothing really stood out to me, but I explained to the person helping me the fragrances that I really love and they recommended this and I just knew immediately that's it. It is Scarlet Poppy. It can have a little bit of a powdery dry down, um, which I don't love, but I feel like it's short lived. I've been on a fragrance train lately. It's just been like, it's been a new exploration. You know, like when I started knitting, it was all about 
the yarn and finding yarn that would match this and that. And I feel like with fragrances, I'm trying to match moods, seasons, favorites. You know, we all have our own personal profiles and I'm trying to find the right one for me. And so I, I discovered through YouTube this company called Dossier, and they make all of these dupes for designer fragrances. They'll take the same scent profile of $150 or more, sometimes like $300 fragrances, and they'll sell it to you for like $30 or $50. It's just like a inspiration station for for fragrance to make it more accessible. I picked up two fragrances from Dossier, both of them inspired by a boutique fragrance house known as Le Labo. Um, one of them is here, it's Woody Sandalwood is how it is known by um, Dossier, and it is inspired by a fragrance called Santal 33, which apparently is hugely popular. Everyone in New York is wearing it, yada yada, I don't know. But I've never smelled the original, so I can't tell you if it's at all like it. When I sniff it, it smells kind of watery, kind of airy and light. Maybe some woodiness to it, but it's just very fresh. Very fresh in a non-salty way. Like I said, it's inspired by a Lola Beau, and it is, I think they're... Gaiac Wood might be the name of the inspiration fragrance. This is Musky Gaiac. This is just more warm and kind of smoky and very woody. And I didn't know that I liked wood before I was trying these two fragrances. And when I say liked, I mean like I'm looking for wood now. Like wood is what I want. I generally prefer fragrances that are very sweet and floral and warm if that gives you context for what I generally like. So the musky Gayak one is like so me but it's like a different version that is a little bit more simple and clean. Dossier is offering you 10% off your order if you're interested. I'm going to leave the coupon code in the description box below. Um, so definitely check them out if you're considering a new fragrance for yourself or someone that you love. You can save a little bit on your order. That is my fragrance collection. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've made it this far in this week's video, let's leave in the comments the fire emoji to remind us of all of those smoky sweet scents that just get me ready for fall. I can't wait for it to cool down. It has been a hot summer in Baltimore. It's finally in the 80s, which feels nice. Um, we actually have the windows open today and we're just kind of airing out the upstairs a little bit. I have so many chores to do. The house is in a little bit of a disarray. Um, I haven't given a garden update in many weeks because I have not been out there. Like I physically cannot even go outside. It's so hot, it's so humid, and more than anything, the mosquitoes are murder. We have these little zebra mosquitoes, maybe you know what I'm talking about. They will find you and they will kill you. They are a nightmare. I hate them so much. They just ruin my life for a solid three months of the year. And I can't wait till they're all dead. Like I genuinely cannot. Um, so I'm just not even gonna be outside until everything is dead or ready to be torn out. And I'm just gonna tear it out so fast and fill my compost bin so high. That's all I live for right now at this time of year. That's the end of this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. We upload every Sunday at 9 a.m. for the premiere. So if you want to join us for the premiere, it's too late. It's already happened. But now you know next Sunday, like that's when we premiere. Um, and actually, I should mention next Sunday, um, I will be I will be trying to upload. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get my thing. Okay. I got a lot of work to do, but all of that to say, I'm going to be 
in Ocean City Friday through Sunday. Should I be telling the internet I'm out of town? I don't know. I'm going to be at the annual putt-putt golf tournament next weekend. So my goal is to upload a video for next Sunday morning. I don't know if it's gonna happen because I don't know the internet situation, but I think that if I can get a Wi-Fi password to the Airbnb, I should be fine. I should have something to share with you guys. And I just, I wanna thank you for being here. It is so much fun to hang out with you and to engage in the comments and check in, say hello, see what you're working on. So thanks for being here. It means a lot to see you and to hear from you. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week and that you take care.